Hi, my name is Nicole with So Much More. In this video, I'll be working with the QCT5 quilting software. This software works perfectly with my Juki J350 long arm. We're going to be quilting out a design specific to a block on this quilt. Let's get started. using QCT5 and choosing Select and Sew. This option opens a multitude of quilting motifs and designs. The design that I chose is a basic pattern which is essentially square. However, I needed to quilt onto a parallelogram shape. There's still four sides, it's you know just a little bit different. This shape has four plotting points. I'm going to move the head of my long arm and align the needle to each particular point on the parallelogram shape. I'm going to assign each corner to the design on my QCT5 interface. I'm using a stylus instead of my finger to touch the screen. I found this to be a more accurate way to command my movements into the system. I've provided a link to this type of stylus in the description of this video. Continue to plot out the shape and I'm also going to select the ditch feature. This will basically stitch around the perimeter of my shape. Once I have lined everything, then I'll select the quilt button. This takes me to some additional features where I'm going to optimize my pattern. The first thing I'm going to do is take out this trim line. This aqua blue line simply means that it's going to require us to move to another section and possibly cut and bury thread. Select remove all and this will turn your trim line into a stitching line. I happen to like a stitching line here, so I'm going to leave it. You'll also notice a red and green circle. The green means that this is where the stitching is going to start, and the red indicates the stitching end point. I prefer to start my stitching on a corner. So you can move your start and stop around by clicking the reverse all button. You can also see how your pattern is going to stitch out by pressing the animate stitching button. I like to slow down the speed for this because I think it just goes too fast. There are quite a few features on this optimization page, but we're going to press on to quilting our parallelogram. So you'll notice that our stitching point is on the bottom left hand corner of our shape. And that's our starting point. So I'm going to manually move the head of my long arm towards that spot. I'm going to line up where my needle would land to that position. Now you can let the computer do this for you, but I like to go ahead and pull my bobbin thread up before the stitching begins. An easy way to move your bobbin thread to the top is to take a single stitch and then pass your top thread under your quilting foot and grab hold of that bobbin thread. You'll see the bobbin thread come up. Simply grab that thread and pull it up and out to the top. At this point, you're ready to stitch out your quilting pattern. Simply click the Sew button on the QCT5 interface and your pattern will begin stitching just as it was programmed. In case you're wondering, I'm using the glide foot. This is a great accessory to have. The machine I'm using is the Juki J350 QVP. It has 18 inches of throat space and has built-in stitch regulation. Hooking it up to the QCT5 interface was easy. To learn more about this machine and this quilting system, be sure to check out the links in the description of this video. Once the pattern is stitched out, it's time to bring our bobbin thread to the top, and this is easy to do. You make a single stitch at your stopping point. Pull the head of your long arm away from that stitch and grab the top thread to create some slack. Go back to your stitch point and make a second stitch. Pull the head back again to reveal your bobbin thread. Now pull these threads and trim. 
Finally, we're going to bury our threads. I love using the Snag Magic Tool. This little gem comes in a two-pack and it's really helpful for the tedious task of burying threads. If you bury your threads, you're going to want to grab this for your quilting studio, I promise you. I've provided a link in the description of this video. Once you've pulled your threads through, simply snip the excess threads and go on to your next block. Now, I do have a confession though. I wait until I have to advance my quilt before I bury any of those threads. What about you? I'd like to know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. There are so many things that you can do with the QCT5 and your Juki long arm. We're just getting started, so be sure to subscribe and we'll have lots more fun. Bye for now. Yeah.